Starting off today with Oatmeal Raisin Cookie Stout from Strathcona Beer Company in Vancouver, BC. So judging by what it says in the can, it's an oatmeal stout. It has some chocolate and some raisins fermented in with it. Sounds interesting. So today I'm going to be playing with this little game here. You may have seen these uh, before. It's been around since, what did it say on the website? 2003, I think they started making these. And this is actually based on a database that was, gener that was created as part of an AI for an online game at, uh, what is it, 20q.net. Uh, I'll link to that down below. But the premise of this game is it asks you 20 questions, hence the name, 20 questions, and you answer by pushing the various buttons here. There's a yes and a no, an unknown, and a sometimes to answer its questions. And you can see just slightly on the screen there, I think, that it's uh, sitting ready, waiting for me to push a button. You can also note that the top right quadrant of the screen is buggered up. In addition to that, it looks like there's a bit of a vertical bar just sort of in the uh, in the uh, one-third position as well. Anyway, this one was dropped off to me mostly because the screen is a little bit buggered up, and I'm guessing that there's a little zebra stripe on the back of that screen that is making poor contact. Um, or I can sort of see in through the case. I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but back there, there's a ribbon cable, a uh, flat flex ribbon cable folded over. Yeah, there you can just sort of see the white and the strips of it. So if the screen is repairable, I'm guessing that's what it's going to be. But then I sort of fell down a rabbit hole uh, looking into the history of this thing and just the game itself. And apparently the online version, which this is based on, has a full neural net running in the background to, uh, to learn from your answers so that it can improve its questions for future visitors. This one, and there's several versions of it made over the years, um, uses, as I said, a subset of that database inside it. And apparently it's about 80% accurate in its guessing what you're thinking. I don't think there's going to be any way to look into what the database or the software is doing inside this thing. It's probably just on a blob chip, but, uh, We'll at least see what the display technology looks like, if nothing else. And a couple of little tiny screws in there underneath the batteries. There we go. So two little side buttons pop off. Oh yeah, those two side buttons uh, are designed to speed up and slow down the rate of play of the game. And yeah, we can see inside everything's happening inside one little blob chip. So... There'll be no delving into what's going on in there. Over here, we've got just a little electrolytic capacitor. So presumably just smoothing out the bumps in the power, I would guess. And then we got four screws holding that piece in. And there's a little chirper buzzer there too. Because it does make a few noises at you. I think you noticed it when it woke up earlier. And then as it's playing, it will uh, chirp at you. So there's... Four screws dropped out. Save them for later. Uh, what can we see? There is the keypad with a little resistive switches. Looks like a little bit of crud on there. I'll clean that up later. And the more I look at it, the more it seems that that flat flex is not actually going to a zebra strip. It's just going straight onto there. Okay, that's problematic. I don't know that I'm going to be able to do anything about that. But we'll take it one step further apart. It is a very tightly assembled little device. And a lot of screws in there. So two more screws to take the LCD bezel off. So that guy comes off there. Come on. And, oh, that flat flex is torn. Oh, shit. Now, if that was already in a weakened, cracked state, that would explain the display. 
Oh, and if it wasn't, then I think I may owe somebody a new device. Damn it. I'm going to put this back together off camera. I think, and uh, yeah. Oops. All right. Makes noise, that's good. And the screen is even more buggered up than I started. Well, looks like I'm going shopping to uh, replace this thing for my buddy that lent it to me. Sorry, man. On the, in my defense, it was already kind of damaged. However, he liked this game so much that he had another version of it. This one here which uses persistence of vision for the display. It's exactly the same game, exactly the same game play. Um, let me crank up the iris a little bit on the camera and you can see the persistence of vision uh, display a little bit better now. I was gonna take it apart and show you how the persistence of vision display works, but now I'm a little scared, but I think I will anyway. No guts, no glory or something like that. Let me just open the bottom of this guy. Battery compartment out. Ooh, C-cells. Wow. This thing will run forever. Or maybe not, because it's got a motor in there driving that POV display. There appears to be eight screws holding this thing together. Four in those holes and four under the feet. Okay, there we go. So the top and the bottom are held together by a small handful of wires uh, going to the power switch, the battery box, and this little speaker here with the capacitor in series. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I can't see a way to take this apart easily without messing with the mechanics. And given what happened on the last one, I'm not going to get that carried away in here. So if we use a bit of creative camera work and a bit of creative lighting, we can sort of see what's going on inside this thing. See, there's a, a circuit board sitting on top of a motor shaft. So there's a small handful of components on there, and you can see that there's a wiper to the motor shaft to pick up power right there. A capacitor for presumably power supply just to... Uh, smooth it out just in case that's a little ripply and rubby. So on the underside of this side of the board, there's what looks like an infrared receiver, another capacitor, and what appears to be an infrared LED. And then over on this side, we have an LED facing down, and we have an array of eight LEDs up here, which are the pixels for the actual display. And then inside the dome, there is a couple of LEDs, one back there and one back there on the base. And then over here, there's what looks like an infrared device. And that infrared device there is lined up with the infrared device that's on the bottom side of the spinning board. And then these two LEDs, that one and that one, are lined up with the other two devices with the what looks like or the other infrared device out there and the other led that's on the board in there so that will be how it's communicating between the base and the top there's a couple of things going on it has to communicate the pixel data for these things and it has to communicate where in rotation this top board is in relation to what's going on down below and sort of see it right there there's a little blob chip that will be handling the infrared communication back and forth at the bottom um, so the game data is being generated down the bottom and is transmitted as display data um, that chip will be dealing with that and telling the pixels where to go based on based on the rotational position so that is sort of interesting i wish i had a way of getting into this thing further without with enough confidence that I wouldn't destroy it. Because um, I kind of don't want to send these both back broken. That would just suck. So 
So there we go. That was, uh, that was kind of interesting. I am disappointed in myself for going deeper than I should have gone with this one. And those little flat flex ribbons going on to glass LCDs. Somebody may be, re be able to repair them, but that's way beyond my skill level. Um, so I think I'm going to go shopping and uh, see if I can find another one of those for him because I know he uses that. I know he takes it with him when he's going ice fishing and whatnot. Um, but at least I didn't damage this one. Unfortunately, we didn't get in deep enough to see the mechanism up close and personal, but I think we got the general gist of it. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, questions, comments down below. Um, feel free to critique my uh, capabilities because I'm sure some of you will anyways. Regardless, uh, I will talk to you later.